Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel all about electronics. So in the previous video, we have seen the phase shift method and the filter method for the generation of the single sideband suppress carrier. So in this video, we will learn about the third method, which is also known as the weavers method. So in the previous video, we have seen that in case of this phase shift method, we need a circuit which can provide a phase shift of minus 90 degree to the entire baseband signal and to implement such circuit is very difficult but in case of this third method or this weavers method we do not need to provide a minus 90 degree phase shift to the entire message signal so first let us briefly see the different blocks of this weavers method and later on we will understand it in detail so in this weavers method there are four balance modulator two low pass filter and the two minus pi by 2 phase shift block but in this case these two minus pi by 2 phase shift blocks are used to provide a minus 90 degree phase shift to the single frequency and hence the complexity of this phase shift circuit will reduce substantially so in this scheme first the modulation is carried out at the low frequency and then after this modulated signal is passed through the low pass filter and once again now the modulation is carried out at the high frequency so as you can see there are two arms so in one arm or in one side the carrier signal is directly given to the balance modulator while in other arm first minus 90 degree phase shift is provided to the carrier signal and then after it is given to the balance modulator so here this first carrier signal is in the audio frequency range while the second carrier signal f1 is in the radio frequency range all right so now let us understand with this third method how we can generate the ssbsc signal so let's say we have some message signal mt and this is the frequency spectrum of the message signal so as you can see the maximum signal frequency in the message signal is equal to b so if that is the case then the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter should be equal to b by 2 Moreover, the carrier frequency F0 should also be equal to B by 2. Now, in general, if we have some message signal MT and whenever it is multiplied with the carrier signal FC, then the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus FC. And in fact, that is the spectrum of the DSBSC signal. And whenever one of the sideband is suppressed, then we will get the SSP signal. So, if we suppress the lower sideband, then we will get the upper sideband. Similarly, if we suppress the upper sideband, then we will get the lower sideband. So with the help of this weavers method also, we can generate the same spectrum. But for that, we also need to select this frequency F1 properly. So later on, we will see that what should be the value of the F1 to generate the upper sideband and the lower sideband. But for a moment, to understand this method, let us put some numbers. So let's say we have this message signal which contains the information from 400 hertz to 1000 hertz. That means in this case, this B is equal to 1000. So for this signal, the F0 should be equal to 500. And similarly, the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter should also be equal to 500. So first of all, let us see the frequency spectrum of this signal B1T and the V3T. So at the first balance modulator, when the message signal is multiplied with the carrier signal cos 2 pi f0 t, then the entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus f0. Or in this case, it will get shifted by 500 hertz both on positive as well as the negative side. So when it gets shifted on the negative side, then we will get this blue spectrum. Similarly, whenever it gets shifted on the positive side, or on the right hand side then we will get this yellow spectrum now after that whenever this signal is passed through the low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 500 hertz then the other two bands will get suppressed so this is the spectrum of the signal after the low pass filter now after that once again this signal is getting multiplied with the carrier signal cos 2 pi f1 t that means now this entire spectrum will get shifted by plus minus f1 so after the balance modulator 
if we see the spectrum of the signal V3 of T, then it will look like this. So similarly, now let us see the spectrum of the signal V2 of T and the V4T. So as you can see, this balance modulator multiplies the message signal and the carrier signal sign 2 pi f0 t. So as per the Euler's identity, this sine 2 pi f0 t can be written like this. That is e to the power j 2 pi f0 t minus e to the power minus j 2 pi f0 t divided by 2j. And this 1 divided by j is equal to minus j. And then if we use the frequency shifting property of the Fourier transform, then this message signal mf will get shifted by plus minus f0. But now if you see, then we also have this j term. So as you know, this j is equal to e to the power j pi by 2, which indicates that it provides the phase shift of 90 degree. So now although this message signal gets shifted by plus minus f0, but this signal is 90 degree phase shift apart, from the signal V1T. So if you see the frequency spectrum of the signal V2 of T, then it will look like this. But now if you see, then this vertical plane is actually a J plane. Or we can say that the signal is on the imaginary plane. So this blue spectrum is M of F plus F0, while this yellow spectrum represents minus M of F minus f0. So because of this negative sign, first this spectrum will get inverted and then after it will get shifted by 500 hertz on the positive side. So this is the spectrum of the signal V2 of t. And whenever it is passed through a low pass filter, then these two bands will get suppressed. So this is the spectrum of the signal after this low pass filter. Let's say this signal is equal to V2 star t. So now this fourth balance modulator multiplies this signal with sine 2 pi f1 t. And let's say the output of this balance modulator is equal to v4 t. So now once again using the Euler's identity, we can write this sine 2 pi f1 t like this. And if we take the Fourier transform of this entire signal, then using the frequency shifting property of the Fourier transform, we will get these two terms. But if you notice, then this V2 star t or the signal after the low pass filter was already on the imaginary plane. That means it already has a j term. And whenever it gets divided by the 2j, then this j term will get cancelled out. That means now if we see the spectrum, then this V2 star f will get shifted by plus minus f1. So this spectrum represents V2 star f minus f1 while this spectrum represents minus V2 star F plus F1. So due to the negative sign, first this spectrum will get inverted. So as I said, here since the J term gets cancelled, so this spectrum is on the real plane. So this is the spectrum of the signal V4T. So now if we add this signal V3 of T and the V4T, then we will get this spectrum. That means on the negative side, these blue spectrums will get cancelled, while on the positive side, these yellow spectrums will get cancelled. And if we see the spectrum after the addition, then we will get the upper side band. So now let us see what should be the value of this F1 to get the upper side band. So earlier we have seen that if MT is the message signal, then the SSB SS signal will look like this. And in fact, it shows only upper side band. So here this Fc is the carrier frequency and this Fc plus B is the maximum frequency component in the modulated signal. So in our case this B is equal to 1000. That means this frequency component is actually F1 plus B by 2. And this frequency component should be equal to Fc plus B. That means we can say that this frequency F1 should be equal to fc plus b by 2. That means whenever the frequency f1 is equal to fc plus b by 2, then we will get this kind of spectrum. So in short, using this third method to get the upper side band, this signal v3 of t and the v4t should get added 
and the value of this frequency f1 should be equal to fc plus b by 2. So similarly, whenever we perform the subtraction, then we will get this lower side bend. Because in this case, on the negative side, this yellow spectrum will get cancelled, while on the positive side, this blue spectrum will get cancelled. And if we see the overall output after the subtraction, then it will look like this. So now, let us see what should be the value of this f1 to obtain the lower side bend. So as we have seen, if fc is the carrier frequency, then in case of the lower side bend modulation, the minimum frequency component after the modulation is equal to fc minus b. And in this case, this b is equal to 1000 hertz. And in this case, in this weaver circuit, the minimum frequency component at the output is equal to f1 minus b by 2. So this f1 minus b by 2 should be equal to fc minus b. Or in other words, we can say that this f1 should be equal to fc minus b by 2. That means to obtain the lower side bend with the help of this weaver's method, we need to perform the subtraction over here and the value of this carrier frequency f1 should be equal to fc minus b by 2. So in this way, using the weaver's method, we can generate the SSBSA signal. So now, if we consider the case of the tone modulation, then mathematically, we can also find the expression of the signal at each stage and we can see that how the circuit will generate the SSB signal. So here, I am quickly going through these mathematical steps, but wherever you feel, you can pause the video and you can go through each step. So now let's say the message signal MT is equal to cos 2 pi fmt. That means now this signal V1 of t is equal to mt times cos of 2 pi f naught t. Or we can say that it is equal to cos 2 pi fmt times cos 2 pi f naught t. So as you know, when we have a 2 cos a cos b, then we will get cos plus cos terms. So in the first term, we will have an addition of the two frequency components, while in the second term, we will have a subtraction. So as we have seen earlier, this frequency f0 is equal to b by 2, where this b is the maximum frequency component in the message signal. So in this case, this f0 is equal to fm divided by 2. Therefore, this f0 plus fm is equal to 1.5 times fm, while this f0 minus fm is equal to minus 0.5 fm. And since the cos is an even function, so we can write it as cos of 2 pi times 0.5 fm t. And whenever this signal is passed through the low pass filter, then we will get only one term. So here, the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter is also equal to 0.5 fm. That means if we see the spectrum after the low pass filter, then we will get only one term. So let's say this signal is equal to V1 star T. Now this signal is once again getting multiplied with the cos 2 pi F1 T. And after that, we will get this signal V3 of T. That means this V3 of T is equal to V1 star T times cos 2 pi F1 T. That is equal to half times cos of 2 pi times 0.5 FM T times cos 2 pi F1 T. So once again, we will get the two terms. So in a one term, we will have an addition of two frequency components, while in the second term, we will have a subtraction. So in this way, we got the expression of the signal V3 of t. Similarly, let us see the expression of the signal V2 of t and the V4 t. So this V2 of t is the multiplication of the signal mt and the sign 2 pi f naught t. That is equal to cos of 2 pi fmt times sin 2 pi f naught t. So as we know, this 2 sin a cos b is equal to sin plus sin. So in the first term, we will have an addition of two frequency components, while in the second term, we will have a subtraction. And once again, since this f naught is equal to fm divided by 2, so in the first term, we will have a 1.5 times fm, while in the second term, we will get minus 0.5 fm. And since the sine is the odd function, so we will have a negative sign over here. So once again, when this signal is passed through the low pass filter, then we will get only this one term. So let's say 
this signal is equal to v2 star t so now at this fourth balance modulator this signal is getting multiplied with the sign 2 pi f1 t and after that let's say the signal is equal to v4 t that means this v4 t is equal to v2 star t times sign 2 pi f1 t where this v2 star t can be represented like this so now if you are aware then this minus 2 times sin a sin b is equal to cos minus cos. So in this way we will have a two cos terms. In the first term there will be a addition while in the second term we will have a subtraction of two frequency components. So here the one frequency component is f1 plus 0.5 fm while the second frequency component is f1 minus 0.5 fm. So in this way we got the mathematical expression of the v3 of t and the v4 t. So now if we add these two terms then these two terms will get cancelled out and at the output we will get only this term and in fact it is the upper side band. So as we have seen earlier in case of this upper side band the value of f1 should be equal to fc plus b by 2 or in this case it is equal to fc plus fm by 2. So if you put the value of f1 as fc plus fm by 2 then this term will be equal to half times cos of 2 pi times fc plus fmt and indeed it indicates the upper side band. Similarly whenever you perform the subtraction then these two terms will get cancelled out and at the output we will get only this term which indicates the lower side band. So for the lower side band the value of f1 should be equal to fc minus fm by 2. So if we put the value of f1 as fc minus fm by 2 then we will get half times cos of 2 pi times fc minus fm t which indeed indicates the lower side band. So in this way mathematically we have also seen that in case of the tone modulation how we can generate this ssb ss signal with the help of this weavers method. So if you have any question or suggestion then do let me know here in the comment section below. If you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos.